Hello everyone and welcome to the 5th episode of our audio podcast Voices Unveiled, a platform where we bring women stories from different corners of the world. I'm your host Sumina. Today we're diving in to understand the monitoring framework of the Kunmin Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework or the KMGBF. So this is a special episode that is being released before CBD COP16. Joining me today is my brilliant colleague Meenal Tatpati, who is the Policy and Research Associate at Women for Biodiversity. Meenal's work is focused on gender considerations within the monitoring framework. A disclaimer though, before we begin, at the time of recording this podcast, the UN Environment Programme World Conservation Monitoring Centre or UNEP-WCMC and Women for Biodiversity were co-developing the indicator methodology on the national implementation of the Gender Plan of Action. I'm happy to announce that the indicator methodology is ready and can be found, uh, the link can be found in the description box. Uh, Women for Biodiversity also led three information sessions about this, two online and one in person at Substa26 uh, to present it to a wider audience to garner feedback and review, including to the parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity or the CBD. You can find all the links in the description box below again. Before we delve into this engaging conversation, please do not be shy to subscribe and follow Women for Biodiversity on social media. Our handles are below in the description box. Your support is much appreciated. Welcome to the podcast, Meenal. Thanks, Sumina. So, I am a research and policy associate with the Women for Biodiversity. Uh, I'm also a lawyer and I have been involved with conservation and livelihood issues for the last 10 years. So happy to be here and to speak to you today. Thank you for joining me today, Meenal. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what your work entails? Sure. So I have been working on um, looking at the monitoring framework of the Kanman Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. And specifically within it, I am looking at gender considerations uh, we are also working towards developing of an indicator methodology um, on the gender plan of action um, with uh, UNEP WCMC. So I'm also part of that project. So these are the different things that I'm doing within Women for Biodiversity. Okay, then let's get right into it. Can you help me understand what uh, is the monitoring framework of the KMGBF? Okay, so uh, when the Kanman Montreal Global Divers, uh, Biodiversity Framework was adopted at COP15, along with it, there were several other decisions that were also adopted uh, by the parties, right? So the monitoring framework is one such decision. So we can say that it is a it's it is sort of a living document which accompanies the uh, GBF. Now I say living because um, it is essentially going to look at where the world stands in terms of achieving the goals and targets that the GBF lays down, right? So how does it do that? So the document includes um, a set of indicators for each goal and target. And what are these? These are basically um, mechanisms to measure the progress towards the achievements uh, done towards meeting the goals and the targets. Right. So we have some headline indicators and then we have more detailed component and complementary indicators. And. Essentially, these are recommended for national, regional and global monitoring of the GBF. So basically what the monitoring framework does is to look at where the world is in terms of achieving the goals and the targets of the GBF. And through these indicators, the countries will have to report uh, the progress of the targets in their NBSAPs and the national reports. So. Uh, we also call it living because um, several indicators are not yet developed and data has not been reported for all the targets and the goals. Mm -hmm. So the subsidiary body on scientific, technical and technological advice, which we call as the SUBSTA, will keep 
developing and enhancing the monitoring framework further. So that is basically what the monitoring framework is. That really helps <laughs> for us to understand, or at least for me to understand, uh, in a more simpler, in a more simplified manner about the monitoring framework. But you know, Minal, uh, there's this question that has that I always wanted to ask, but I feel like you are the right person to ask as well. Um, so there is a text on the Convention on Biological Diversity, and then there is the KMGBF, or what's also called the Biodiversity Plan, and then there is the Gender Plan of Action. So there seems to be a lot of documents that integrate gender into biodiversity conservation. But I want to know how does the monitoring framework fit into this mosaic? Like, how are all of these texts um, interrelated? Correct. So, um, first of all, uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity is actually a multilateral treaty. It's a global multilateral treaty, uh, where which has three primary goals, which we all know, which is conservation of biological diversity, uh, the sustainable use of biodiversity, and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits that arise from genetic resources. So uh, the CBD comes out of the 1992 Earth Summit and along with the CBD, the other conventions that were adopted were the UNFCCC, which we call the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the UNCCD, which is the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. So as of now, the CBD has 196 parties. and in the 10th meeting of the uh, conference of parties of CBD in Nagoya, uh, basically a strategic plan for biodiversity was adopted. And this plan was from 2011 to 2022. Um, and it included something called as the Aichi biodiversity targets. So these were 20 targets. And they were uh, basically addressing five strategic goals, which were defined in the strategic plan for biodiversity. So, uh, what parties decided to or agreed to do was to translate this international framework into uh, up, into updating the national biodiversity and uh, strategy action plans. Now, what the KMGBF does is it builds on the strategic action plan, and this plan is from twenty twenty to twenty thirty. Now, as we discussed before, the monitoring framework is basically a set of indicators that looks at the monitoring of the KMGBF. And within this monitoring framework, there are indicators, uh, essentially binary indicators and component indicators that are addressing the implementation of the standalone target that we have in the KMGBF of gender equality, which is target 23, right? So these, this, is the, this is basically the breakdown of all the related uh, uh, mechanisms that you asked. Now, the gender plan of action is one of the decisions adopted at COP15 to support the gender responsive approach to applying the implementation mechanisms associated with the GBF. So the gender plan of action is basically it intends to complement and support the implementation of sustainable development goals in line with the KMGBF. Um, within the gender plan of action, you see there are three expected outcomes and then there are several indicative actions. And these indicative actions are basically meant to guide efforts towards um, achieving the objectives of the plan. Um, now, the gender plan of action also recognizes that it is not just parties, but other subnational governments, cities, towns, local authorities, um, international UN related systems, indigenous people, local communities, women groups, youth, private sector, and many other stakeholders need to put together efforts to achieve uh, the objectives of gender responsiveness. So basically what it does is it identifies the responsible actors for each indicative action. So if you look back on how all these texts are related, the gender plan of action actually follows a long list of gender-related decisions and texts 
within the CBD process, right? And we have Women for Biodiversity has actually published a booklet called Gender Equality and the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity, which is a compilation of decision texts from the first COP to COP15. And basically, it is tracing the history of all the gender-related COP decisions. So essentially, this is how all of these different mechanisms that you spoke of are interrelated with each other. And we have a long line, we have a long history of how gender has been addressed in these uh, decisions and in these texts. Just a heads up for our listeners, uh, if you want to read the publication that Meenul has just um, mentioned, which is the Gender Equality and the Convention on Biological Diversity, a compilation of decision texts from COP1 to COP15, then I will leave the link uh, in the description box below. Okay, so moving on to the next question, Meenal. Um, thank you for uh, beautifully explaining the interrelationship between all of these texts as well. I mean, you know, it's difficult for people who are not from, uh, who are not actively engaged in this field, but, but are interested um, to actually understand where all of this fit. And so that explained it, and you explained it quite well. So thank you for that. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Uh, so how is Target 23, which is the target on gender responsive approach um, or the gender responsiveness of uh, KMGBF uh, addressed in the monitoring framework? So the GBF states that the successful implementation um, will depend on ensuring gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. So it means that Ensuring gender responsiveness and biodiversity conservation has to go way beyond the process of just reporting um, in the NBSAPs or the national reports, but to actually incorporate policy approaches towards gender responsiveness at the national and the regional and then the global levels. So essentially, if you look at the current monitoring framework vis-a-vis -vis Target 23, what we can see is that there is no headline indicator. Uh, however, uh, in the recently concluded uh, meeting of SUBSTA, which is SUBSTA 26, the parties have noted the progress uh, of the process to develop a draft indicator on the national implementation of the Gender Plan of Action, uh, which is being co-developed by Women for Biodiversity and UNEP WCMC. And basically, this indicator is a component indicator for Target 23. So if you look at um, the monitoring framework currently as it sits, Target 23 has a binary indicator. So essentially, the binary indicator is a uh, number of countries with legal administrative or policy frameworks, um, which ensure that women and girls have equal opportunity and capacity to contribute to the convention and also to ensure that women have equal rights and access to land and resources. And what is great about the monitoring framework is it is also saying that essentially gender-related data disaggregation has to come from all other indicators as well within the monitoring framework. So it's addressing all different targets, not just target 23. Um, and then you have component indicators uh, out of which the indicator on the national implementation of the gender plan of action is one indicator, which, like I said, is being developed. And then you have several binary indicators also uh, within the monitoring framework. Now, if you look at the uh, GBF, uh, we need to understand that several targets within the GBF, not just Target 20, 23, have very important gender considerations. So, for example, if I say Target 2 on restoration or Target 3 on, you know, uh, on protected areas and the expansion of protected areas, it is extremely important to highlight the contributions that women and girls have towards restoration and protection of biodiversity and land. Um, and you could take the entire KMGBF and look at the targets and each target would have a gender consideration. However, um, the current monitoring framework is addressing the monitoring, reporting and 
progress of gender responsiveness in only a few of these targets through binary and complementary indicators. Essentially, what this means is that there are, while it is saying that disaggregations need to be collected, there is gap in the data which can list, which can actually list women and their needs while addressing uh, targets. So there is a need to uh, essentially create certain indicators also uh, within these different targets and then to analyze whatever gender disaggregated data we are getting from each of these targets. Right. Can you also briefly explain what do you mean by headline indicators, component and complementary indicators for the better understanding of the targets and also um, its implementation? Sure. So headline indicators are essentially um, uh, processes where which are being developed at the global level, um, which are which are going to broadly address how targets are being implemented at the global scale, right? Whereas the component and complementary indicators are giving a bit of a bit of more diversity in terms of the different kind of data that that is getting generated. So for example, um, if you look at the component indicators within target 23, uh, you have what is the proportion of seats held by women in national parliaments and local governments? Uh, what is the total population of adults with secure tenure rights to land? Right. And um, and then you disaggregate it by sex and type of tenure. And then you have complementary um, indicators which are looking at, um, you know, maybe countries where there is a legal framework that guarantees women's equal rights to land or uh, and its control. How many um, uh, positions in national and local institutions? So in legislature, in public service, in judiciary. So essentially what the complementary indicators are doing are building on the component indicators and the headline indicators are at a global level, whereas the complementary and the um, the component indicators are more on the national and regional level. So they are the ones who are going to, basically the indicators are going to collect data on different aspects of a particular target. Okay. Um, so moving on and also keeping in mind your scope of work as well. So I wanted to know and understand why was there a need to develop a methodology for monitoring progress towards the national implementation of the um, gender plan of action? Right. So like I had already pointed out, there are some gaps in the indicator methodologies in the monitoring framework, right? If you want to look at gender equality across the KMGBF. So for example, uh, target 23, like I said, does not have a headline indicator, but it does have a binary indicator, to which is going to be the main measure to track progress towards this target. Now, while the gender plan of action, the national implementation of the gender plan of action is sitting right now in the monitoring framework as a component indicator, it does not have a methodology. So it was an essential to ensure that uh, there can be some sort of monitoring done of the binary, uh, which can complement the binary indicator to see if, for parties to see if they are achieving target 23, right? And the achievement of target 23 would be essential to figure out whether the entire monitoring framework and uh, its implementation and its progress in countries is gender responsive or no. And that is why there was a need felt to develop an indicator that would monitor the gender plan of action as it is being played out uh, at national levels. Hmm. Definitely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I just also want to go briefly back to what you just mentioned that uh, target 23 only has binary indicators, but it does not have a headline indicator. Um, I want to know why is that? So why does target 23 not 
have a headline indicator so if you look at the set of binary indicators that we have for target 23 these are already developed sdg indicators right uh, however to have a headline indicator for target 23 uh, first of all it hasn't been developed second it is gender responsiveness of the entire framework so it is going to be a very difficult uh, Uh, sort of indicator to implement or or even to operationalize or even to um sort of think about because gender is such a cross cutting issue so how will you have one particular monitoring to ensure that gender responsiveness is being achieved in all the targets across biodiversity uh, conservation so it's a very difficult task to actually have one particular headline indicator for target 23 these are some great insights meenal i mean um if you're not actively involved in this field you will never even think about all all of these things you know um it's so complex and layered at the same time so what do you hope to achieve with the um indicator methodology yes so uh like i've already pointed out there are certain indicative actions within the gender plan of action uh now out of these 18 indicative actions are something that the parties will need to adopt and will need to work towards so essentially what we are hoping to achieve is that through this indicator methodology um there is a sort of guide provided to monitor the progress that parties are making in achieving these indicative actions right it could help the parties look at areas where more work needs to be done towards implementation of some indicative actions within the gpa um it could help to track the progress of areas where parties have uh, done quite well in achieving uh, certain uh, indicative actions um and then this would provide a good measure for other parties like a peer learning um sort of uh, initiative where parties could look at how certain countries have adopted uh, different uh, ways in which um the monitoring of the progress towards gpa can be can be done so that is what we are hoping to achieve with the methodology great um great stuff meena um one last question before you leave how has the response been so far uh, for the indicator methodology so uh, yeah so meena the response has been very positive uh, we while we were at substa we met up with a lot of uh, different parties who were very interested in um in the in the draft uh, methodology um we in fact had uh, virtual sessions uh, introducing the methodology in april um and then we had an in person session um at substa um and there were quite a few parties who were very interested uh, notably um south africa uh the democratic republic of congo uk france uh vanuatu uh which is a small island so a lot of parties have very um encouraging uh, responses to the methodology we are still in the process of um reaching out to more parties and introducing the methodology to them we've we've also received a lot of feedback towards the methodology uh, in terms of uh, fine tuning it um also from a lot of stakeholder groups uh, and observers to the to the cbd uh so it's been a very encouraging response um also just to point out that the methodology has to be peer reviewed uh which is a process that the um secretary secretariat of the cbd has to uh, initiate and hopefully we will be able to talk to them as well to ensure that uh the notification for the peer review of this methodology uh does go out and it's it's a it's a very interesting process um where to co-develop this methodology also because 
it's interesting to hear uh responses from parties as to what can be achieved what cannot be achieved what are the different uh, uh sort of uh issues that actually happen at the national level with collating certain kind of data um so it's it's a very interesting process and so far the response has been very very encouraging and we are hoping that the methodology is available for uptake by the parties at cop 16 in kali colombia this year so in all i think it's been a very interesting enriching experience for both the teams in women for biodiversity as well as unep wcmc who have engaged in uh, developing this methodology with the parties that is all we have for today Uh thank you for staying with us until the end of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. Women for Biodiversity will continue to advocate for adopting the indicator uh methodology at the CBD COP16 which is less than a month away in Cali, Colombia. If you wish to know more about the monitoring framework of the KMGBF then please visit www.cbd.int. If you wish to connect with us do follow us on our social media the handles are in the description box or write to us at communications at womenforbiodiversity.org that is number 4 instead of f o r so until the next episode stay strong and carry on